Kalispera sas, Kiris Kikiri, Kalasius de Desto Canado, Canadico Instituto Stinalada, Ime Katinkis Brandenburg, Koyan, Koerin, Koserinos, the Atentis to Instituto. Ime, I am Brandenburg, welcome to the Institute. Um, I'm from the University of uh, Victoria in British Columbia, and um, I'm happy to be here this year serving as the interim director of the Canadian Institute. Um, before I introduce our speaker, um, I just want to also announce our upcoming uh, programming. Uh, on Wednesday, March 27th, um, our uh, Homer and Dorothy Thompson fellow, um, Barbara Scarfo, will be giving her lecture uh, in this room, uh, Mothers and Infants on Funerary Commemoration, a Cross-Cultural Study. So that will be March 27th um, at 7.30, so I hope all of you will attend. And then also, uh, looking ahead to May, uh, we have our open meeting coming up. And that will be on May 22nd, um, at, starting at 7 o'clock, uh, at the Danish Institute uh, downtown and down in Plaka. And so I will be giving a presentation on the activities of the Institute for this last year. And our open meeting um, speaker will be Professor uh, Sunjun Kim from the University of Toronto. So we, we have her lecture coming, the announcement and the abstract. That will be publicized soon on our website. So tonight, we are very happy to have um, uh, our colleague from up north, um, uh, Dr. Zizis Bonias and Jacques Perrault, who will be talking tonight on their project at Ancient Argilux. Um, after an undergrad and MA at the University of Laval, Jacques Perrault, our speaker tonight, um, completed his doctoral studies in Paris. Uh, at the same, that same year, he was admitted as the first Canadian member of the French School of Archaeology at Athens. Um, and this was a very distinguished um, appointment as, a, as a, the first Canadian. Um, in 1987, he was appointed director of the Canadian Archaeological Institute in Athens at the time, the CIG now, um, and then returned to Quebec and um, taught for a brief stint at Concordia University, and then since 1993 has been at the University of Montreal. Um, since 2014, he's been the chair of the University of Montreal's history department. Um, he has taken uh, part in many archaeological excavations um, in France, Tunisia, Syria, and then in Greece, in addition to his project, of course, in Argilos, which is 25 years in growing, uh, he was at Malia, Thassos, and Lesbos. Um, and so uh, his main research interests and publications concern contact between Greeks and non-Greeks, trade in the ancient Mediterranean, and um, especially many aspects of Greek ceramic production. So we are very happy to have him tonight, and I will um, turn it over to Jacques, and you can see the title of his talk. Thank you all for coming. Merci. After things, I'm all going to get you out. Thank you. 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 Δεν μπορούσε να είναι μαζί μα, το ήθελε πολύ και κάτι έτσι και τέτοιο πάνω. Οπότε εγώ θα πρέπει να κάνω την ομιλία. Ε, δύσκολο να μην καταφέρω. Και για να είναι ακόμα πιο δύσκολο για μένα, θα πρέπει να είναι και στα αγγλικά. For those of you who uh, are not familiar with uh, uh, Argilos, I'll give a short introduction on the site, and uh, before getting into the uh, main topic of this uh, evening, which is one of the uh, areas where we have been uh, excavated. Um, so, um, Argilos is, uh, of course, in northern Greece. Northern Greece, as you know, was occupied by Thracians at the beginning of the first millennium BC, and it was uh, colonized. Um, the northern shores of the Aegean were colonized by uh, by Greeks. These Greeks, they came uh, mainly from uh, uh, three islands, that is, those Greeks who colonized the area between the Thermaic Gulf and the um, Nestos River, came from uh, three uh, islands. Um, the Evians established themselves around the uh, Thermaic uh, Gulf and along the two uh, western uh, prongs of the Kalkiliki Peninsula. Uh, colonists from uh, Andros uh, established four colonies, uh, Sane, Akantos, Stagira, and uh, Argilos. And then, of course, the, uh, our friend from Paros um, founded a big colony in Thassos, and from Thassos founded a series of smaller runs, ones along the coast uh, in, front of the, in front of the island. 
Argilos is uh, very well situated. It's close to the uh, Strimona River. The Strimon was uh, uh, one of the major uh, entries to the heartland, Thracian heartland. It was also uh, close to the uh, Pangaean Mountain, very rich in gold mines, close to Lake Kerkinitis, which was rich in silver. And so uh, all this area was a sort of El Dorado in antiquity, and uh, Greeks, Macedonian, Persians, everyone wanted to get their hands on this, um, on this area. Uh, the site occupies a, um, a hill about, about 500 meters by 500 meters. The site was founded around the middle of the 7th century BC. The literary sources say you know, about 655, 54 uh, BC. Uh, we have evidence of uh, uh, Greeks there during this period, and we have evidence of Thracians there even a bit earlier. So the, the site was occupied by Thracians when the Greeks first arrived. We've been working in four uh, areas. So along the uh, sea coast here, um, of course on the Acropolis, the South Sea Slope, and this area here, which we call the, the Cucludis sector, it's the name of the owners of this uh, very large plot of, of land. Uh, this is what we're going to spe uh, speaking about uh, this, uh, this evening. Uh, students participate every year, every year, help us excavate, and this is how they look at the end of the day. <laughs> uh, but uh, without their help, um, uh, you know, we wouldn't get as much done as we have been getting done during the last uh, few years. So this is a view, aerial view of the uh, area along the sea coast. This is where we found the earliest levels of occupation. That is, we have them there, and we have also early material on the, on the Acropolis, but that come from uh, later fields. Uh, floor levels we have uh, along the seashore, and so this is where we have Thracian pottery that goes back to the 7th and even to the 8th century. Now, this is where we have various Greek uh, pottery, East Greek and of course Cycladic, uh, may, this may be Andrian uh, uh, pottery, so uh, the early material which is, goes back at least to the middle of the 7th century BC. This is also where we found first the earliest uh, houses, huts, uh, are found in this area too. Uh, and uh, it is an area uh, which um, will uh, see a great uh, development during the 6th century as elsewhere on the site. Uh, this is uh, along the coast where we found part of the fortification wall of the city. The city was fortified around uh, the middle of the 6th century BC, so around 550 BC. Uh, they built a fortification and there's a very big urbanistic development on the on the site. And this is shown uh, here, for example, we have different streets and we have the view of the fortification here, but it's also very clear on the southeast uh, slope of the hill, so southeast sector here, you see this very wide uh, street and buildings which are built, in fact, on both uh, sides of them, so we uncovered um, many uh, different, uh, uh, a few big complexes here. I'll just give you a quick view of uh, some of them. Uh, this is one of the, this is the first house we excavated, we excavated uh, which um, was built in the uh, middle of the 6th century, destroyed at the beginning of the 5th, rebuilt, destroyed again towards the end of the 5th, and uh, finally destroyed in 357, like the rest of the site, by Philip II. He takes control of the city in 357, and he moves the population to Amphipolis. And so the site is abandoned. So you see that Argos has a very short lifespan of 300 years, which is a good thing for us, because the architecture we have, the evidence we have of the city um, is quite early. We have you know, clear, clear 7th and 6th century buildings which are preserved on um, a very 
and some, in some cases on, on very good heights, up to four meters high. I'll show you a few pictures. So this is rapidly House A uh, in its first uh, phase, uh, composed of two uh, separate rooms. And then uh, uh, that's around 550, in 525 they build this big building next to it. Everything is destroyed at the beginning of the fifth. When they rebuild the house A, they add rooms in the back, uh, and uh, there's an upper uh, story to that. And then this will be, once again, uh, partly destroyed at the end of the fifth, but there's not much change in, in the architecture. Next to it, uh, building E, which is, I'm not getting into the details, but it's a very interesting uh, type of building which appears in Greece around the middle of the sixth century. Uh, elsewhere, also, you see one big room with the central part of use a bathtub for the latest phase. And uh, this building, we found a small um, hoard of silver coins as a foundation deposit in its second phase of occupation. So it's a, it's a very important building, and various objects, of course, coming uh, coming from uh, uh, from that same uh, that same building. And of course, uh, our, our heads are ram heads, which are antifixes. So we found three of those, uh, which are associated, once again, to this big, uh, this big uh, building. And finally, the Acropolis, the most interesting uh, discovery of the Acropolis is what is under the roof here. Uh, I said that the site was uh, abandoned in 357, but uh, part of the Acropolis was reoccupied for a short period. Um, we know that after Philip II conquered this whole area, uh, to thank his, uh, his generals, he distributed plots of land. And uh, one of his generals received part of Argos and built a, a, some sort of a mansion on this uh, Acropolis. It's, it's really uh, uh, very interesting because this is the highest point of the, of the hill you wouldn't expect the architecture to be preserved on such a height. And we have here the whole height of the, uh, of the ground floor. So it's three meters, the walls, walls are three meters high. You see the staircase that brings you up to the, to the upper floor. And uh, of course, he was using this to produce uh, olive oil. We have the torpion here in situ. This is the earliest known torpion in situ from, from in northern Greece. Um, so it's, it's very, very interesting. Now, uh, this um, rapid uh, development of the city from the, the middle of the 6th century uh, onwards uh, is, of course, very interesting uh, when you look at the architecture, etc. But uh, I, we, we're, we, 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 didn't, we, we didn't have that many uh, proof of economic activities. To go, to go with this. Uh, and so we started to look at the material, and uh, we had a few um, uh, smelting kilns, kilns you know, which are linked to uh, metallurgy, and so this is normal, of course, in the, uh, in the area. We have, this is uh, one example from the seashore, that early 6th century. And then uh, back to house uh, A here, this small room was a bronze smith a workshop, and so you see another, the, the rest of another uh, example there. And even in building E, uh, while they were building it, you see an, another example here of a small uh, furnace uh, in this area. So they were working metal, that is okay. Uh, they were, of course, uh, f fishing. Uh, many, uh, um, uh, many objects linked to, to this activity. And, there's agriculture uh, going on, and there's uh, textiles going on, and they're producing pottery as, as uh, in, in other cities, and of course they're minting their own coins uh, from the last quarter of the 6th century. But uh, uh, say, uh, well, all this you have everywhere, you know, so uh, uh, why is, wh wh where's the difference? Where's the difference with Argivos? Why is it growing so quickly? Why is, you see this from, once again, the, the second half of the 6th and the 5th century, all of these, um, uh, this building activity going on. Um, <clears throat> a 
few years ago, in 2012, uh, we uh, decided to explore this area because we wanted to more or less link what we had found along the coast with what we had on the southeast slope. And so um, we bought um, one small plot from the Kutludis family uh, and we, and we um, opened a few the trenches there. And so uh, the first year we found, these images are not very good, but we found these structures. Uh, it didn't look as anything very interesting, but we noticed that we had <coughs> a series of rooms up here. And um, uh, probably what was, was the most interesting was the southern wall here looked to be the way it was built much, uh, much earlier. This was uh, from the latest phase of occupation of the site, so from the fourth century. But this wall, uh, it was, uh, when we looked at it, seemed much earlier. And so we opened a small trench in front of it, and we went down uh, of about two and a half meters. And you see we found this sidewall here. And, and all this looked much more archaic um, as, as, as building. So we decided the following year to excavate in front of that, uh, of that wall. And so uh, this is when we found uh, what you see here. Uh, so this building with five uh, rooms. You see, so this is from the first year. This is our um, second year there. And one of these rooms, you see, has a press bed for uh, a press arms. And so uh, we noticed that these were shops. And um, so we had the, the western limit of this complex, which is here. You see, this is an open, you see, a gutter, an open gutter for rainwater okay, on, the, on, the, on the western side of the building here. But of course, this continued. But we didn't have, this wasn't our part of land yet. So, well, we phoned David and we said, David, we're going to buy another part of land. And so we bought the plot of land next to it. And what did we find? Well, we found another five rooms to this, to this building here. And so another series of, uh, of shops. Um, so when we found this, we first looked at this, we said, wow, well, what we have is a, a simple, uh, the version, another version of an early portico. Especially when looking at this wall here, you see that comes a bit out this way, we said, well, we probably have something like this. But these are Hellenistic. And uh, our building was, well, at, at the, for now, the latest phase was early, end of the fifth, early fourth century. And um, we had a, quickly found that we had a problem with this because we found in front of the entrances of some of these rooms tiles that fell most probably from the awnings over over the over the door. So you know this couldn't have been a close portico. This was this a series of shops in one big elongated building. Um, now of course. Uh, we had 10 rooms, uh, it continued, so we bought another part of plot of the, our friends who do this, they love us. <laughs> and we uh, excavated that and we, this, is, this is what we got. So we have here this complete building composed of 12 shops. On one side, limited by this open there. Gutter. On the other side, we have a street here, about one meter 70 wide street, north-south. And we have a alley in the back here. Now, you, you, this is just on the slope of the hill. Uh, the back wall here is about three meters high. So these back walls, they serve as terrace walls for the alley in the back, which gives access to this other building here, our building H. And, so, and then on the other side of the street, you see that we have two other buildings, P and Q. 
Um, the dating <coughs> of this, this plan is terrible. I'm sorry, I'm sorry about that. The, the, plans are coming out there. Um, the dating of our building L, um, so we were sure that we had two phases. When we started to, to excavate it, you see the fourth century floor of Phil and the fifth century floor, and this we have in all rooms. So this was said built at least somewhere at the uh, end of the first quarter of the fifth century. But then at one point, excavating here room, what is two, four, six, and uh, this is the fifth, uh, the fifth century floor, we started to see sand, with small sand pockets. Uh, um, and so you see, we opened this up, and we um, just went down, and we went down, and we found an earlier floor, which is our sixth century floor. Uh, and so this shop here, this one at least existed uh, during circa the second half of the sixth century. Now, since then, we have found evidence of the 6th century level in two other rooms. So we now think that the whole building was built uh, in the middle of the 6th century, which makes it, uh, as you will see, the earliest uh, known building of this type, uh, commercial building of this type in, uh, uh, in Greece, and in fact, uh, elsewhere also. This is to give you an idea of these uh, floor levels. So this is the fourth century floor, uh, which is which covers the destruction here of the uh, fifth uh, century uh, one. Um, and so here again the general view. So and that's for the chronology. Uh, the function that is the, the what they were producing, selling in these shops. Uh, <clears throat> of course, it's. We're still working on the material. It's not easy because uh, there's not that much left uh, in these uh, in these rooms. Uh, we know, of course, once again, uh, for uh, this is this is an easy one. Okay, for the olive press has these exist elsewhere, but in later periods, this is an example from Delos in the second century BC. Uh, we think that one of the rooms um, they were producing textiles. We found uh, Bella will say how many. 50, 60, I don't know, uh, uh, loom weights in, in uh, this room and, and a few other elements would make us think that they were uh, producing, selling textiles there. In another room, we have uh, quantities of uh, deer antlers, and these uh, deer antlers are all worked, and I have a, a PhD student uh, working uh, on this, and they were, they were from these antlers, they were producing various types of, of, of objects. And he, uh, he is uh, working on all our bones from all the sites, but he noticed that the ones coming from this room are worked in a, in a specific way, which is different from all the other material, that uh, bone material from, from the rest of the site. So this is very a closed uh, context, and you have one person which is which is uh, working this, uh, in, 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 a, in a specific way. There was even a bore tusk, these bore tusks which uh, are used to produce, you see the holes, in, they were used to produce uh, uh, big uh, bracelets. In another room, the, la the, the last one at the end there, L12, we have an oven. Uh, we don't know what they were cooking in it, but the, an, an oven there, the room next to it. Uh, there are bases here to hold amphras. And uh, one of the amphras, we have about, I think, around 10 from that room. One of them uh, contained the uh, olives at, uh, uh, in it. And uh, so this is, uh, you know, probably to have a quick access to storage jars here to sell the produce which was in there. Now, another, um, I'd say, proof that we have, uh, these are all shops. Uh, the, quantity of coins we found uh, close to 500 coins from this building it's incredible it's really 
some rooms, I mean, they have 60, 70, 80 coins uh, in, 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 in a room. So it's, it's really, I don't know, I mean, in these people, so many holes in the pockets. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a bit, it's astonishing. Another interesting aspect of these are the small altars. Uh, each shop has one of these small altars. One, in one room we even had, you see this small bronze plate that was put, this was used to burn uh, as incense, incense uh, 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 burners. There are found, you see here, in, 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 in palace. And this is another interesting aspect of these, uh, of these shops. Now, on an architectural point of view, there are very uh, interesting particularities to building L. Um, the, uh, the internal walls, dividing walls, are all built uh, the same way. So the base is a stone, a stone base, and then it is the upper part is clay. And as you uh, get towards the back of the wall, you see that the, the stone part is higher, goes higher up. Here, it goes higher up here, and the rest, all this part here, is clay. You have this, this is earth now, but you see this is what is left of the original, part of the original clay, covering that. And then once this was done, then on both sides of the wall, they add an extra layer of clay. So in fact, the whole wall, stone and the upper part, are, are against one again, covered with, covered with clay. In one room, they added these, for I don't know what reason, they added these, uh, these slabs of, of, of the mess uh, on top of the, of the clay the part covering the wall. Um, these shops, there wasn't any upper floor. We have no evidence of an upper floor. We have evidence of maybe a mezzanine, what have been a, a patan, you know, for storage. And uh, we think that uh, in, in this room, for example, the base here may be something that was used to put uh, a ladder, to base a ladder on to go up to this mezzanine. This here, this is my cousin's shop. I'm sure, no, this is, 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 is in pictures of Near Eastern shops. And the interesting part is here in the back. You see the stone here in the back on which the ladder, they put the ladder on, that brings you up to the patai. So this is, you know, what we may have had. But there's surely no complete closed upper floor to these, uh, to these shops. Another interesting uh, aspect uh, are the thresholds. Now look at the, these thresholds very carefully, and you see that the, notice that the pivots, pivots, eh? here holes for the, for the doors, are opening on the outside. They're not opening on the inside as they should in the, in the normal house. The doors open on the inside, not on the outside. Uh, and this is uh, also interesting. And, and if any of you have been to the, to the Near East, uh, I, I, I worked many, many years in Syria, and uh, you see these in, in Damascus, for example. This is one of Damascus souks. You see when the shops are closed here. And when they open, the doors always open on the outside. Because you save space on the inside of your shop because you don't have to keep the, the, the area around the doors clear and open them. And you add space on the outside because you are adding some of your products you're replacing them on the outside and, and even the, putting some on, on the doors themselves. And so that's what they're doing. Uh, uh, so you see that, that you understand why, why they're working that way in Algiers. Another interesting aspect is the, are the walls, the, the front walls, the facades of these, um, of these shops. You see that they're all different. Okay? This is the uh, 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 shop uh, two and shop three, you see that this is different than shop three to shop four and etc. So each shop has a different facade. And when you look even at the back walls, you notice some differences in them. 
Now, what does this what does this mean? This means probably that most probably that the city surely allocated the space to build such a big. This is 65 meters long. So the city. This was a, 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 a decision by the city to allocate this space uh, and to build these shops. The city probably decided on the on, on the width and the, on the size of each of these shops. But the owners were probably responsible for building these shops, and so they used their own workmen. They got their own stones and they built. Their, they built their shops. Um, I will show you an example from close by here, where when you read the reports, you see that's exactly the same, the same thing. Um, and in fact, I'll show it to you now. Uh, there are a few examples, a few examples of these of these shops. Of course, uh, Athens. Yeah, these are. You must all know this article by Susan Wartrop, which uh, and wrote on these uh, various buildings that were had uh, different meanings to them, but now are considered to be to be shops. There's a long one here, the commercial classical commercial building, for which you have one, two, three, four, five, six, 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 six rooms here. And um, when this was found, too, uh, the excavated noted that the facades were all different. And it also thought that uh, probably the owners had the responsibility to, uh, uh, to build their, their own, their own complex. There's another example in, uh, this is in southern Italy, the site of uh, Locri Episifini. You see these alignments here of, they're not sure if they're shops or if they're rooms for, uh, for the, the um, sailors uh, passing by, but you see the concept here. And these ones here are shops. This is truly shops here. And there's a, another example here from uh, Morgantina in Sicily, where there was a first group here of six shops built, and then they added another uh, six uh, to them. So, so you see that these exist. Um, uh, the interesting point regarding Argyros is that all these are at the earliest uh, from, the, from the end of the first half of the 5th century. So the 5th and 4th century. Argyros uh, is, dates, goes back to the 6th century BC. So this uh, in itself is, uh, is quite uh, interesting. Um, let's have a look at the, uh, the buildings around building L, so uh, H, Q, and, and P. Um, the easiest one uh, for us to understand is, is building P. Uh, why? Because uh, it follows uh, the exact same system as uh, building L. And I, I mean, it's in, it, 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 it's in the continuity of, um, of building L. So you see here, uh, the two, uh, two first rooms we've been uh, excavating. Look at the threshold. You see uh, how this threshold I'll show you a closer view of this. Uh, so this is uh, um, uh, P1 here, the entrance here, and here you see uh, this is the entrance to P2. P2. You see the uh, sidewall, same system. You see this, this, is, this one is very well built. Uh, the wall here, you see at the back part, here is high up. And then with, we have part of the clay, original clay, uh, still over here. Um, so these are clearly shops. Uh, maybe except for the first room here, uh, that is a, a P1. Um, uh, there's a few uh, particularities to P1. First, you see that there's this, there's a, a, there's a, a stone, uh, um, uh, base to it in front of it, floor on the outside of it, uh, which this is the only shop that has this. All the other shops, uh, it, it's the earth on the outside. There's no, there's no, there's no street uh, there. There's no, uh, th but this one has this. It has this, uh, um, I think, mainly because of this street here, which is uh, 
very, very steep, quite steep. And when it rains, all the water comes down here. And so by having this uh, stone uh, 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 step whatever here in front, the water doesn't turn in front of it, but has to continue to continue down. And, but when you look at the way it's built, notice here in front of the door that you have these white stones around here, and you have here a series of two gray ones, which is interesting and, uh, in itself. And in the room, we found this roof tile, which is, this wasn't this hadn't fallen from the roof; it was it was placed there. And in back of the roof tiles, right here, we found a base here of a. Seven uh, pieces of these rounded pieces of pinnace. These originally served as covers for pithoids. But these ones were packed one on top of the other, and then fallen right here, all around it, was a luterion. So this was surely a stand for a luterion, which was placed right uh, in front of the of the uh, this pan tile uh, that was there, probably you know for water. Uh, so that the water didn't go on the surrounding floor. And so there may have been, I think, a different function to this room than to the other the commercial ones. There's another point to this also that I forgot to show you this, but the entrance uh, to P1 is center. It's in the, the, the threshold is in the center of the room. All the other rooms of the shops, the entrances are a bit off center. Um, towards, it, towards it, uh, the left. So um, this is sheer, surely an, a, another series of shops except for this first room. And curiously, the first room of building L is also a bit curious. It's building room L1 is the only room that doesn't have a threshold giving on to the front of the building. You access L1 by L2. And so good. Of course, a reason for this, which we don't have this time. Uh, building uh, H is a bit more problematic. It's not as well preserved. Uh, we're very close here to the uh, to, to, to the today's level, and so a lot of the walls uh, are have, you know haven't survived uh, now. But we still see that it is divided, composed of twelve rooms. But in this case, the rooms have interior separations. So there's one separation that the, the, the one wall that separates the room in two parts, in the front part and the back part. And a lot of the front part of the rooms also have another separation to making two uh, uh, spaces in the front. Um, these are not shops. These are not shops. Um, we found uh, at least three of them have small hearths here, so cooking areas. So this people were probably, most probably, uh, staying in these uh, units. But then at the same time, we have at least one uh, example here of yet another uh, furnace, which is uh, linked to, we have tons of slag that was found around there, linked to uh, metallurgical activities. So these may have been a kind of half and half living area. and. Um, uh, and, and, and working uh, spaces for for uh, uh, for this for this building, and then finally we have we have building Q, and so building Q again we have two rooms. Uh, this we just started uh, working on this one a bit last summer. This one has been uh, fully excavated uh, to the uh, the latest level, so the fourth century floor, and it's quite interesting because uh, this is a house. And this is a house uh, with a front room here and two uh, smaller rooms in the, uh, in the back. Um, the back room here, this was storage area. The back at the left, the back room here, you see this rounded um, uh, 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 space there. This was used for, oh, we really don't see anything. This was used to put one of those Mills, you not know, the Olynthian mills. I don't know if you know how these work. You put them, you, put, you have the base here, put it on there, then you have the upper part, and you put a, 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 a piece of wood through that, and your grain is going through here, and then you are moving this over that 
to get the grain to see, pass through. And so these are done on these uh, spaces here. So that was over there. And then the front area, there's a bathtub. <coughs> you see, as you come in on the left, and they're very ingenious people in Algilos. So they have an opening in the wall, you see, with this triangular piece of here. So we empty the bath straight into the street. And, now isn't that something? and then on the other side here, on the other side here, you have the cooking area here. Uh, and here there surely was an opening also on the wall for the, you know, for the smoke. And, and you have this part here, which is the base of a stone staircase. So you have three um, stairs of this uh, stone staircase. And now this is very, if you know the traditional Greek architecture in the houses, you, you find these every, you know, in, in many, many houses. And so um, um, this was surely the, the case uh, of house uh, E with, you see, I'm very sorry. You see the staircase here, there's a wooden part of staircase bringing you up to the upper floor. So we are sure that um, as regards uh, Q1, this is the first new proof that we have, the first house, and that there was an upper story to this building, which to this, at least this building built in, this is the second row, right? so built in back of the shops uh, in, in front of the top. We have to see now if this is the case for all the units of, um, of P and, and Q. Now these housing units, I'll show you this one example. Uh, there's not that many, but uh, this is from, from Evia, from the uh, Villa Varacos uh, fort. These units that they had uh, excavated and they say that they, well at least some say that they were used by the soldiers to house the, the soldiers there, but you see it's groups here of the so they, these exist in in in, in, Rome, um, in, in the Greek world. And a lot of objects from this, of course, this house of uh, amphras and you know, different storage jars and and, 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 and cooking pots and, and, and etc. And of course, uh, coins. Not as many as in the shops, but uh, a few a few of them. Um, so, so this gives you an, an idea of this area. Well, there's one, one uh, question here. Um, two, two more things I want to address. The first is, what do we call these? What, what is this area? So my talk is, is uh, shops, workshops, and houses of the merchant's court. I love this title. It's very 19th century, <laughs> not the merchant's court. But what's a merchant's court? And, and, and so is this merchant's court, is this a commercial district, is this a shopping mall, you know, what, what do we do? I think that well, we don't have a merchant's court. There's tons of uh, merchants where everyone is. Um, I don't think that we, we may have partly a commercial district, partly, but then we don't know how many buildings like this we have. We don't know how far this goes uh, on each side. Uh, a shopping mall. Shopping mall is a very modern term, but uh, you can imagine uh, these shops. You have 12 here. If there's another 12 here, and you have 24 shops. You know, you're just getting close to a shopping mall. Uh, I think, but maybe what you have are are commercial streets. That's what we have in Greek cities during this period. Like it, it, areas in the city where you have these commercial streets. And you find these, I'll go once again back to Rokli. Uh, we're not sure for this, but this is surely the case. This is one of the main streets outside of the, of the city where you have these. And, and, and of course, you find these once again later during the Hellenistic period. This is Thassos. This is well-known um, commercial street in Thassos, right in, in back of the, the Agora. And everyone knows uh, Delos, of course, you know, these rows of uh, these streets with all these rows of shops in Delos. So, so these exist, and um, I think that already uh, in the archaic period, we had this same type of arrangement in, in Avenues. One last. 
one last um, aspect here. As I said at the beginning that we, we had originally started to uh, dig here to, uh, to try to link all of this together. Um, especially to this part here. You see how big this is I mean, compared to you see the southeast sector here with these big houses we have. Uh, this is very, very big. So how does all this uh, get to, to, together? So uh, we had a, we bought another plot. Which is which? Which was the last one? The last, the last could do this plot. We bought this here. Um, this uh, this Brendan signed for it. Brendan signed for this one um, here. And so uh, last uh, summer, uh, I said, okay, we'll open here to see if you see the main street here. And I'll show you again to see if this if this. Uh, uh, ah, yes, here. No, but he, he, here's, of course, you say, how thick is this is linked? You see this street here, and you say, well, come on, it's easy. This is a north-south, so this goes down towards the port, and on the other side, you go up to the southeast sector. So where's your problem? I understand. But this is a very narrow street here. So it's a, a, a meter seventy. It's not, it's not that wide. And when you look at the one we have on the southeast slope here, this is five meters wide. This is serious. <coughs> Serious stuff, here. and so uh, I wanted to to check to see if uh, this uh, street, which so we, that we had here, right, you see the south sector, uh, it continued down towards the port, and so this is how it was uh, last summer, and so I, I just went with a uh, uh, with a, uh, uh, you know, and I just cleaned a bit here. I found these these stones here. So I said, well, we have it. You know, the thing must continue. And so we continued, we opened, and, and, and we just continued. And so you see, we have it here, some 70 meters, we, we have covered, 70 meters along the street here. It's going, it doesn't go straight towards the port, and there's a reason for this. But right here, it's 8 meters wide. This is a, this is a main street of our years. Um, there's one big building here, and then there's two or three other ones along this side here. Now, why it doesn't go straight to the sea is because of the slope of the hill. So if you if you are putting it straight down here, you have a very steep slope. So that's no good. By putting it a bit sideways like this, it's it's what do you say pure uh, bato. pure bato. Uh, you see, so it's, it, things, things are, are easier here. As you can imagine the carts coming up here, etc., etc. So all this is, of course, very, very interesting. But we're at, since it's not going straight down, uh, what's happening with our, our building? We, we're, we're far, we're far from our buildings. Right? We're far from our buildings. So there is a small problem, or at least we thought that there was a small problem. Now during the uh, autumn, we had. Uh, a, a very modern problem over here is that there's a the modern water pipe that brings you know the water to the surrounding villages. Uh, it it's a, goes along the street here, but here for reason you don't know, quite understand. It cuts through. It cuts through here, and so we already broke it three times. Here. <laughs> and when you break these water pipes, it's a kind of a quantity of water that comes out of it. And so we said we have to get this fixed. So uh, we opened a, a trench along the, see, along the road and we just put in another pipe following the road there so that we don't have the, this problem in the back. By doing this, we found another problem. It's the old tail cable. <laughs> <laughs> that's more difficult to get. Uh, anyhow, and so we, <laughs> we put this in. And uh, I opened a, um, a trench uh, to see how deep, uh, the, 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 to see if these buildings, P and Q, continued, and how deep were the, were the remains uh, to get all the, see you know, how difficult to get all this earth out. Because there's just one thing I forgot to tell you, is that for the last 25 years, we've been putting our earth in here. <laughs> so, so it's what we and so I, I opened a, a trench, and uh, here, and what did I find here? 
is this is Q, and this is the back wall of Q. Here. And so this building, Q, you see the back wall here, and it, it finishes here. Okay? So this building is like the other ones, 65 meters long. It is probably separated in 12 rooms. And P in front of it must be 65 meters long and separated in another 12 rooms. And at the end here, where the building finishes, there's a ramp sculpture that starts here. And you have these dressed stones on them. And that's on the, the slabs here. And this goes towards uh, our main our main street. So you see, this here now is the total length of buildings P and Q, which are the same as, once again, L and H. So you have 130 meters uh, of, of shops going around here. And uh, then we'll have to see how, how this connects. So it's, a, it's um, extremely um, extremely interesting uh, situation and it, you understand the very rapid uh, economic and urbanistic development of the city. You will now understand why they're building like mad uh, from the middle of the 6th century uh, onwards because of all this very, very rich economy uh, activities that are going on in the city. So there's one thing left for you all is to come and visit us. <laughs> and it's very easy. It's written. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very much. That was great. I've read so much about this project, but it's really great to hear so much detail. I think you'll take questions. Yes. Very impressive um, You were very detailed about all these shops, and, uh, and that they saw a sort of things about the economic uh, growth of the city around the 6th century, right? And fifth, perhaps. But uh, uh, you also mentioned about this, as uh, you very nicely said, low minded number of coins. Yeah, and, but you didn't, I didn't hear much about the importance of these coins in this respect. What do the coins, so what do the coins show us about the pictures and the coins? Do they testify about the economic growth and what well, the history of the city, whatever it is? Okay. We have a very good uh, Katarina Krizansaki, Katarina Krizansaki, who's working on the coins. And, um, most, I'd say 90% or 80% of the coins all come from amphibians. And they are, um, I don't know what the percent, exact percentage is, but I, at least I mean, most of them are from, of course, the latest phase uh, of occupation of the sea, so the first half of the, of the fourth uh, century. By Philip. Before, 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 before Philip. We have a small problem because we're, and I have the impression that the dating of these coins from, from uh, Amphipolis are very uh, wide. They have a very wide date. They go from 415 up and down to 357, they put because of. Philip's conquest of the area, but in fact, they keep on showing up a bit afterwards in the villages. We, in a few shops, think that after the destruction of Philip's, some of these continue to be occupied for a few years. For a few years. Not a lot, a few. And and we're trying to see differences in the coins. And what Katerina tells me, for now I don't see nothing. And she says, if, there, if, if they had continued to be occupied for 
some years anyhow, we would start to see coins of the era of Philip. You see. And we don't see them. So they may have been squattered a bit, they may have been, but you have the impression that in some rooms you have this other occupation. But it's hard, it's hard to see. But 90% of the coins, 80% come from there's an article that will come out in, in, in publishing that's supposedly which she, she's giving all of these all of these numbers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 No, it's very good. Yeah. Uh, also, yeah. Yeah. do we have any archaeological uh, evidence of how the city looked like after the occupation by Philip, or what's, how, the, how the city looked like after the occupation? It was a band. Completely? Yeah, it was simply a band. So it was because destroyed. Have, yeah. Except the Acropolis. The only evidence of Hellenistic occupation is the Acropolis. On the slope, I mean, there's not one Hellenistic shirt, not one. So it's all from the Acropolis, it's there, and it's uh, maybe for three generations and then it's finished. Well, you said some of the generals, the generals uh, built mansions. He, one mansion. Uh, one. What? One. 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 one is enough. <laughs> is enough. <laughs> you know that for Philip, it's a, this is a good way, it's a, they, he, ha, he adds to his defense system. So Philip, on, on the frontier, on his frontier, he likes, he prefers to have one very strong city, which in this case is Amphipolis, than many smaller ones. But then all around the territory, by giving out these, these plots of land to his generals, they are building these, these, these mansions that serve also as surveillance points all around his kingdom like this. So it's, 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 uh, Very clever, it's yeah. it, it is. And you start now, we start understanding this because we find uh, <coughs> other ones, they're starting to link all these together. So, ah, yeah, it's a very, very brilliant idea. About the 5th century coins, yes. Yes. we saw the hoard of Akathos coins, Yes. and uh, we saw also three coins of Argilus, uh, with the horse, you know, the Pegasus. Pe Pegasus. Yeah. Uh, the three coins of uh, Argilus, yeah. they were found in situ uh, or the they were brought by the Persians to be uh, given the, the, the These three ones, uh, don't, I don't think they were found in Argilus. This is not work at the Yampi. We have found some. We have found some. I'm asking you because yeah. it's a big discussion about those coins. Yeah. If they are from Terma, or from Argilus. Yeah, yeah. So, Mrs. Lian, uh, Professor Liambi okay. had uh, decided that they are from Argilus. Oh. But we don't have finds in situ. We have. I now we I, have. Yes, yes, we have. In, in the 5th century. What? Uh, in the 5th century. Ruins. Uh, yes, in the 5th, yes. We have, we have, uh, we have silver coins from, uh, silver coins. Right. We but don't have. Argilus. I'm, I'm of asking course, about Argilus. 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 Yes. Um, I have to check how many bronze coins we have. In fifth but century, we don't have bronze. They, they, they reappear, I think, in the second half of the fifth, no? Who? The bronze? The bronze ones. In, in, uh, no, in the fourth. In the fourth. Uh, in yes. the fourth. And but there's a bit, there's a problem there in the fifth century. Yes. What, with what Liampi says on the... Uh, on the issues yeah. from, from Argos. Because, of course, we have the, the tetradrachms, but the tetradrachms, they were to export silver. Yes, 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 because yes, all yes. those cities, they were uh, mining yeah. the silver, yeah. and uh, they were stacking coins, uh, yeah. the tetradrachms, to export the silver to Egypt, to, uh, to Syria, yeah. and to everywhere where uh, it's yeah. not. But existing. we have smaller denominations. And another silver. question also. Uh, what about the post-Roman uh, period? Post-Roman? Yes. Nothing. Because in Akathos, yeah. which is uh, very nearby, uh, we have the attacks, the barbarian attacks, let's say, yeah. uh, to those cities. Yeah. Uh, so but here we don't have any nothing. sign of ruins nothing, nothing, nothing. nothing. completely abandoned. After, uh, after the general, after let's say, the general dying, some, yes, uh, and some uh, 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 it, it, nothing. Yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. There may be the, the abandonment of this uh, house may be linked to, uh, there are some problems, I think around 276 uh, BC, I think there are some uh, problems up north there, maybe linked to that. But 
there's nothing after that. Is really nothing, nothing about. And it's surprised. Uh, it's surprising to see because these buildings must have stayed, have been visible for many years, you know, before slowly being covered up. And so it's surprising that no one even took the stones from these houses and, and these buildings, etc. But it's, it's quite, quite surprising. How are you envisioning the roof of the, the house? Is Building L, for example. Yeah. <laughs> I think it may be, I don't know, I think maybe yeah. just a slope. I, I don't know. And you do have any of the roof tiles in each? We have a roof. Entrance. We don't have that many, but this is another, uh, yeah. it's one of the problems we have because when people move, when, yeah. people, when they say you leave, you bring everything. And when you, everything is everything. So you, your roof tile, you're going to take them with you. You're going to, whatever you can take. You're, you're, you're ready. So, uh, in some cases, there's not that many. We have a few bits and pieces. One room, we have so many roof tiles in one of those shops. I think they were selling roof tiles. Because we're so, you know, this is the only room we have quantities of them. So, uh, and there's another the room, uh, there's another one that showed you the picture that you see, there's a lot there too. And you, you, you say the word shop, but, and then sometimes, but also I keep thinking of some workshops. And, you know, are they workshops or are they shops? They're both. Yeah. Because they, they are, they are, I mean, they're making like, things. They're making things. You know, they're, they're working and they're selling them. You see, you know, if you, in the Near East, you see it's everywhere. Yeah. And, and it's everyone's everywhere. individualized, too. It's not so much. It is completely individualized. This is interesting. That is, you don't have. Everybody doing textile. Everybody five perfume shops. And five. On, on contrary of what you worked on, where you have, a, I think it's state shops, eh? What it's like. So they're all producing textiles. Beer and bread. And beer and we need beer for yeah. it, I guess. Yeah. Beer for textiles. <laughs> but but it's, a, it's a different. Yes. Uh, I mean, the economics are, are, are different. But here, you, you have these individual shops. You will see a bit, uh, you'll start to see in, in, in Pella, when they build the Agora in Pella, and the Agora of Pella is uh, 350 BC, okay? so when they build the, the Agora in Pella, then you see this, you know, the perfume shops and, the, and, the other shops. and then they're starting to group things together. So it's another. Well, this is an amazing site and an important commercial center, I guess. Uh, at some point, you have shown us some small altars. Yeah. And you said, if I, I'm not mistaken, that there was one in each uh, room or something yeah. like that. Yeah. Uh, does it mean that you see a correlation between commerce and religion? Yes. You do. You know today, and I go to this small supermarket in Ke near, near Kadida, next to our place. Uh, when I arrive in the morning, sometimes I'm early, and then he's just opening the shop. And so he opens the shop, and then he shuts the ACM as well, the, the, the alarm system. And then he goes in front of his cash register, and he does his sign, <laughs> and he says something very well all this time. I know he hopes that he's going to get rich again. <laughs> and so I'm, I'm not at all surprised. And in Athens, well, this is uh, Susan Grotov's book on, on, the, on the shops in Athens where they have these uh, 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 deposits, eh? Of, of, uh, pirates. Pirates, yeah. Mm -hmm. Which are linked to uh, also to, uh, to each, uh, each shop, eh? Or? Yeah, sometimes many, one shop at different. Yeah, yeah. which yeah. also are. are some, some religious activity linked to this. Very interesting and an amazing excavation too. Congratulations. So how big are those altars? Yeah, they're, they're so about 30 centimeters. Ah, not big. No, no, not big. Ah, okay. Portable altars. <laughs> because we have a small one that we found the center. Oh, yeah? But it's very small. That's why we mind the shape. It's a square base with a molding. I have to look where it 
just come from. I can come through them. All right, good. Okay. <laughs> yes. I have a specific question about millstones. Sorry? About millstones. Oh, yes. Uh, you talked about this space, which was in the corner of yeah. this room. Uh, but do you, do you have the millstone on it? Yeah, not on it. Not on no, it. We have a piece of it next to it. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. And it was uh, the Olympian. The Olympian. The Olympian. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's funny, eh? When you don't know how this thing works, mm -hmm. I mean, when you, you look at how does this work, and then you say, my God, no. You know, the heaviest thing, that's yeah. what they were moving. You know? <laughs> the heaviest part of it. But actually, it's quite easy to move. Uh, yes? I, since it's mechanized, it's quite easy to move just with one. One hand. Oh, yeah. Like that. Ah, uh, so you you, you, you know. <laughs> I didn't try, but I heard about it. <laughs> and then the, the other ones. Mm -hmm. The That's, other ones, you I know, these easy oval eh? yeah, yeah. ones cool. are, are that interesting because I, I thought, I'm sure, and I don't know, you, you can't know anything. Right? Mm -hmm. And they have these, uh, uh, like, handles attached to them, and I thought they were handles. But no, I thought you do like this. But no, you turn them around, right? And they're on the. You have the flat stone. You turn it around, and you move me like this. <laughs> and so you find both home. types. <laughs> huh? That's the both types you found uh, on the side. Or Sorry. Did you find so other mills on like Quantities. this one? Quantities. Quantities. Yeah, you work on that. I reckon that, yes. Yes, <laughs> you have to speak because we're like interested in having someone, uh, you they can look now. Uh, you have microscopes in this like that. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe this is a good time to break and have some wine and snacks too. So let's thank our speaker one more time. Thank you.